welcome everybody. Thank you for taking some time out of your, your day. Hopefully you've got your lunch with you also. Um, otherwise, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start and we can get you onwards for lunch. So thanks for joining us for today's webinar to introduce our survival guide by quick introduction. Borna is my name. I'm the key account director here at Predator Watch and joined with uh, Lucinda, uh, our lovely data logic trade um, specialist. And we'll go through our step-by-step -step toolkit for business owners wanting to better understand the financial health of their businesses, as well as those that they currently trade with. And a financial year is a great time to reflect on the year that's been, what's worked, what hasn't, but to take those learnings and plan for the next year. I also really enjoy this time as once the dust settles into July, it's a great time to escape this wintry Melbourne weather for a much needed holiday. And obviously the past couple of years, we all are in need of a holiday, I think. So a little bit on Credit Watch's background. Uh, the business was founded, Credit Watch was founded 12 years ago on the idea that businesses of all sizes required access to credit reporting. Today, Credit Watch is a leading innovative um, and digital commercial credit bureau, enabling tens of thousands of businesses to offset debt and supplier risk. We work with sole traders, private businesses, public businesses, and all the way through to the ASX 20. Uh, our 55,000 customer base spans all industry sectors, providing you with a 360 view of the possible financial risks that a customer possesses. So not just a, your peers in your industry, um, and sectors, but other suppliers that may be interacting and providing credit to that debtor. This is where our 35,000 payment defaults that are lodged annually sets us apart, uh, giving you an insight of early indicators of future insolvency. We'll discuss our risk score uh, later on, and for example, how we downgraded ProBuild's um, rating six months prior to the insolvency. Lastly, Crowlich is the only bureau that pulls transactional data from MYV Zero, which also provides additional layers of information on how businesses pay those suppliers, yet again, uh, having an understanding of any early cash flow problems. Yeah, and just on that, look, I'll, I'll do a bit of a roundup of our end-to-end -end product suite. As you can see, it's, a, as I said, end-to-end -end solution. Um, we have a number of options really cover you at every stage of your customer relationship. So that's from onboarding to monitoring to risk mitigation and securing your business moving forward. Um, credit Watch is our core platform. Um, we use this for, for credit reports and for our customers to proactively monitor the customer base, receive those alerts at 12 p.m. every day. Uh, Datalogic, that's my bread and butter. Uh, this is our ATB analysis platform. So it's going to allow you to, to highlight high risk debtors uh, and identify late paying behavior within your ledger. We've also got director due diligence. So this is going to provide you more information on a director and really if they've been sort of naughty in the past, we want to understand that. Um, Apply Easy is our online a credit application platform. Uh, we've got PPSR Logic, our award-winning PPSA platform there. It's going to streamline the end-to-end -end process for you. We've got Jason and Paul who head up the platform. Um, and we've got FRAs or financial risk assessments. So this is going to allow you to assess the financial viability of an important trading partner. And then finally, we've got those portfolio health checks. So it's going to run uh, a data wash on your on your customer base um, and verify your entity details, just removing any of that incorrect or, or out of date data for you. Right. So it's been a couple of interesting years. Uh, unprecedented is probably the word we've heard unprecedented amount of times, but uh, it certainly follows a year of major uncertainty for businesses across Australia. Uh, many owners, executives should be using the end of financial year as a opportunity to look under the hood and assess the financial health of their customers, their suppliers and, and their businesses. Uh, inflationary pressures, rising interest rates, extensive floods, labour shortages, supply chain disruptions. It seems like this list is gets longer and longer, but it's just a number of the accentuating factors that have contributed to highly unusual and irregular trading environments for businesses this last year. As a result, owners need to take a much more forensic look at not only their own operations, but the financial health of those that they do business with. Um, our end of financial year survival guide, and if you haven't uh, grabbed a copy of that, we'll certainly circulate that uh, post webinar, uh, but it provides you all the tools that you need to ensure uh, that, they, that you're not missing any uh, key pitfalls and loose ends uh, that could lead to major problems uh, down the track.
Yeah, exactly right. You've got a, a, a link that you can download that survival guide really easily. We'll provide that to you as, as Borna mentioned. Um, Look, as Borna said, um, and as we're all aware, the Australian uh, business climate has been really unpredictable over the last 24 months. We've had curveball after curveball uh, consistently. Uh, so the end of the financial year is a great time to, to, to pause and take stock. Um, it's vital that small business owners use this time to analyse their business, identify opportunities or improvements, um, and make a strong year for, a small plan for the year ahead. Um, on the screen, you'll see several questions and a few preventative measures that um, really should be put into place before June 30. Um, firstly, we can see, you know, are your supplier contracts up to date? Two, is your supplier database all up to date? Um, have you been through your KYC process? Do you have your alerts um, and your customer activity up to date? Uh, are you keeping an eye on customer payment times compared to the market average? Six, are you ensuring you're paying your customers on time? Uh, and have you taken out any PPSR registrations? Eight, uh, are your customers paying you later than other suppliers? And nine, what is the average repayment time in your industry? So now's a good opportunity for Borna and I to just chat through some of these and our yeah. experience in these areas. Um, was there yeah, any that's your attention, Borna? Yeah. The, the, the KYC process is an interesting one and, and not necessarily just related to those that are Austrack reporting entities. Uh, so understanding directors, ultimate beneficial owners, looking up any uh, PEP sanctions of um, watch lists and whatnot. But this last year I've worked with a number of businesses in the construction hire sector. So those that are uh, leasing out capital equipment from Bobcats through to any other heavy machinery worth tens of thousands, if not more, uh, they've been hit with fraudulent activities. So Joe Blow pretending to be Joe Smith or somebody else and a, and a fake ID, those uh, bits of equipment that they've lent out have actually ended up on the grey market and, and, and the businesses have suffered uh, heavy losses, sometimes upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So knowing who you're dealing with, understanding who ultimately owns those businesses, doing ID checks. So is that uh, ID, uh, a false ID? Is that person behind the ID, the actual person? So doing biometrics is, is, is very important and very easy in actual fact. Uh, so that's one. Um, PPSR, obviously top of mind and uh, in, in relation to the pro build example, I think the list of creditors is over 2000 now. Uh, I'd be interested to understand how many are and aren't secured. But outside of insolvent uh, practice, just simply having uh, a registration there for uh, preferential payment claims, uh, certainly bank for buck, uh, a registration is, is very easy, can be done on the government's portal, can be done on PPSR, there's a number of people out there. So, just ensuring anyone that you are doing work with uh, has a that you have a valid registration on. Yeah, exactly right. Once you've got those T's and C's and those initial stages in place, actually entering a registration is a couple of clicks and about you know ten odd dollars. Um, the one that really stands out to me is number eight: Are your customers paying you later than other suppliers? Deadlogic is a great place for you to to review this sort of practice. Um, you can see you know customer market. Uh, payment behaviour there and see how your bills are prioritised against the rest of the market. So that's a great way to have yeah. that additional ability and to establish low hanging fruit in a matter of moments. So that's definitely a great one to, to look into yeah. moving. And, and, on, um, and on that as well, Lucy, like you just said, it's almost like a crystal ball. Uh, if you're able to see how your customers are paying others, obviously they you know, may be using you as a bank or they, you're a, a priority supplier, so they need you. So that's a good way to understand uh, where we should brace for or uh, insert a process to understand what is happening. But on the other side of that equation as well, you might identify businesses that are paying uh, others well, paying you well, and all of a sudden these are my A plus customers, let's call them. So those that you can extend better terms to uh, better pricing or something along those lines to create stickier customers. So a couple of ways to uh, understand that. Yeah, definitely. You can really easily holistically assess the, the health of your ledger, your best and worst debtors, which ones to put on hold, stop, um, and then, you know, which ones to extend further credit onto to improve business and cash flow. So a number of ways you can use that trade payment information to your benefit. Um, but also number four is a really simple one as well, just making sure that your, your customer list and alerts are up to date. You want to be receiving those alerts as and when those, those changes are happening. So I think they're the main ones for us. Um, but there's there's obviously plenty more specific, specific to your process as well that may may suit. Um, as we've we've sort of said, the the end of year 
Financial Survival Guide um, was developed to ensure businesses do have the right tools required to get um, their own financial health in good shape, while also assessing the financial viability of their important trading partners. Um, after a really uncertain period, our aim is for Australian companies to, to reach a, a place of stability. Um, it's been a while since we've had that, so you know you, we want you to be ready to tackle whatever the year ahead um, might throw at you. Uh, the impact of lockdowns has led to an injection of government stimuli, mortgage holidays from bank lenders and temporary uh, moratoriums on insolvent trading through 2020 and 2021. Uh, with these measures uh, lifting over the last 12 months, we, we saw businesses that were previously protected really start to feel the impacts and the hurt of that. Um, so our creditor watch data is starting to reflect that insolvencies are predicted to rise. Um, with specific industries and business sector being, sectors being more, more impacted than others. And Vaughan mentioned ProBuild earlier, but it's, it's not just construction, and he can talk to this in more detail. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's certainly not construction, and it's certainly one that's been well documented, but uh, some of the transactional data that we flow through, and if you do sit on our Business Risk Index webinars or Business Risk Re Review webinars, where Patrick does talk about some of those other sectors, uh, showing uh, signs of distress, hospitality, arts, uh, recreation, uh, transport, warehousing are all industries that are likely to, to default on payment. So do join those webinars if you, if you get a moment. But businesses do need to act now to ensure that they are adequately protecting themselves uh, from suppliers or partners that might be a, at risk of collapse. As you mentioned, um, construction being one of those uh, that's been uh, experiencing a period of volatility. Uh, and it's crucial that businesses understand exactly who they're trading with. So. Here's an example for the 12 month historical uh, risk score for, for pro build. So our risk score is calculated to give you a bit of uh, an understanding of what's under the hood and how we draw on, on the values. Uh, it's calculated daily, drawing from about 30 factors to better understand the probability of default. And then we benchmark that as industry. So the industry is the gray line, blue line is pro build and C2 is the top of the bell curve uh, for acceptable risk. The risk uh, or the ranges of the, the factors uh, range from traditional bureau data, so court actions, payment defaults, insolvency notices, and so forth, to demographic and geographic information. And this is really important as we've now started to understand location as a risk factor. So we want to understand what the, essentially the GDP looks like for where the business is registered. So we look at rent, mortgage, unemployment uh, factors and, and data at those, those levels. Um, and there's the classic example of a of a coffee shop on the Gold Coast being highly uh, vulnerable versus a business um, in Adelaide where rent in Adelaide is business rent is relatively low and socioeconomics are relatively high. And last, we also draw on our unique transactional data, which we talked about zero and NYB and ATB. Last thing, this is most important: we we don't apply a one size fits all to um, our risk score. So in relation to entity structures. So we'll look at businesses, so for example, sole traders that are registered for GST, different to those that aren't registered for GST. Trusts are an interesting one. So trading trusts versus investment trusts seem to possess a, a different risk factor. We'll look at public and private businesses slightly differently, especially those, um, excuse me, those, those larger businesses that turn over more than 50 million and are reporting to the ATO. Uh, so we'll certainly score them differently. So here we can see the 12 months, as I mentioned earlier, the insolvency occurred in March, um, and we first downgraded that uh, risk factor uh, in September, October, six months. Had you monitored uh, this business, uh, you would have received one of those daily alerts that Lucy talked about, notifying you a, a significant downgrade of that risk, and then six months essentially of, um, of possibilities of actioning accordingly. Uh, to brace for impact rather than that final dip in, in February. That's a, a great example of the predictive data we've got coming through. Um, steps you can take to, to protect your business in the lead up to the new financial year are listed on the screen. Um, I'll just quickly discuss a few of these with number one, remove risky debtors or entities from your ledger, uh, level up on your due diligence, uncover trading partners with excessive tax debts, perform ongoing monitoring on your trading partners, review existing PPSA registrations, recover outstanding debt and write off any bad debts. So again, you know, DataLogic can, can highlight um, and spot these high risk debtors and recognize that, that 
late paying behaviour within your aged balance. Um, this can also help you to identify your best and worst debtors. So it's a great way for you to stay on top of that. And if you'd like to, to take a look at that in more detail, I'd love to organise a, a free analysis for you. Um, we can book in a session and, and go through your data one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's a great way for you to, to assess, you know, what's going on in your ledger at the moment and be more proactive. Um, understanding your, your KYC product can help you to reduce your, your exposure to fraud, money laundering, terrorism, financing and other critical um, or criminal activity. Um, you can reach out to your account managers here as well to ensure your monitoring lists are up to date and make the most of those regular portfolio health checks to verify your customer details. So there's definitely those, those really simple steps you can take. But I think we'd both agree that PPSR logic is a vital step in protecting your business moving forward. Um, it's, it's simple, it's cost effective, and it's going to ensure that your goods and services are secure in, in the event of administration. So a really good example of this and the use of our PPSR platform um, is our case study with Prosper. So, so using PPSR logic, you can use anything, but PPSR logic is a really, really great platform. It's award-winning, as we mentioned at the start. But previously it was taking P Prosper about 10 minutes and, and a dozen clicks to, to enter their registrations, whereas using PPSR Logic, they're saving about five to seven minutes per registration. So providing them a really consistent and efficient process. Um, I was having a bit of a read through some stats from AFSA um, who reported that in 2020 to 2021, approximately 78% of all of those registrations were, were entered incorrectly. Um, so I, th I think this is a great time for you to maybe reach out if you're unsure, if you're uncertain about what you've been registering, um, reach out to one of our specialists just to double check. We can offer a, a complimentary review of your existing registration um, just to see what's going on there. So I think why not reach out and have a look at that? Um, and sometimes those, just to jump in there, sometimes those uh, incorrect uh, registrations are simply due to the wrong identifier, so registering over the ACN when it should be over the ABN, or not the for, for sole traders as an example, getting the dates of birth wrong. So it, it, sometimes it can be as, as simple as that. Uh, so yeah, happy to help where we where we can. Yeah, no, definitely, it's it's a simple mistake, human error um, that could potentially put you into a sticky situation. So a great time re to review that um, before we kick off with the new financial year. Okay, so meeting your and financial obligations it comes around every time uh, around this time of the year. So we, we, we know what we need to do, but getting our accounts and records in order, gathering all the relevant reports over the last 12 months, it's important that we work with clean data. So we've touched on the portfolio health check a number of times, uh, just to ensure the accuracy um, of that information. Super's going up next year, which is which is great for all of us on, on PAYG. So that increases in ten and a half percent. So start planning and implementing those super guarantees uh, and communicating across uh, to your employees, uh, making the most of uh, tax breaks. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but yeah, working with your tax agent to understand the latest tax updates and find out what deductions or concessions you can claim. Okay, so planning for the future. So we talked about some of those tax boosts for, for tech and training. So businesses with an aggregated turnover of more than $50 million will be eligible for an additional 20% uh, deduction for technology investments and external training for up to $100,000 in expenditure. This also does include a credit watch subscription for all those wanting a, a financial year deal. Second, the Morrison government also announced an extension for boosting apprenticeship uh, commencements and completing apprenticeship commencement programs, which provides employees with wage subsidies for eligible new uh, apprentices. So if you're planning on taking on a new uh, trainee or apprentice, do so by June 30 uh, to receive a uh, additional subsidy. So 50% in the first year, 10% in the second, and 5% in the third year. Work with your accountant or financial planner to gain insights on uh, the business health going into the next financial year. This is, is the time for planning, budgeting, forecasting to ensure uh, your business is well positioned for the new year uh, and create strategies to meet those financial targets, ensure ongoing profitability and manage potential shortfalls. And lastly, reflect on the past year and analyze what you can do differently. Uh, as economic change, uh, environments change, businesses need to adapt and evolve accordingly. What do you need to do to manage those latest business risks? Yeah, well, look, I think we've given you a good rundown of our Credit Watch toolkit, and I hope that you find 
the survival guide useful and really helpful in the, the lead up to the end of the financial year. Um, I think it's now time for us to maybe pop up a call, poll question and see if you'd like to be contacted um, in regards to anything we've touched on today. Um, we'll pull that up now. Let us know yes or no, and um, we'll be in touch shortly after today's session. Just bring that up for you. Cool, and we'll give you a few minutes to enter your, your answers. Yeah, perfect. So hopefully there's some, been some some tips, some tricks, and some some ways credit watch can can help um, with with navigating through these interesting times. We've got about half of you that have voted, so thank you for that. Um, Too shortly. A couple more, <laughs> couple more slides to get through. So we had an interesting round table event uh, last week or the week before where we had the deputy commissioner from the ATO uh, give a bit of a presentation update on its debt collection process and the volume of uh, director penalty notices. And it's certainly been increasing substantially since the easing of uh, the COVID-19 restrictions. It's important for businesses to, to stay on top of their game uh, as this con activity continues to ramp up. So uh, we're, we're quite proud uh, to be the first cab off the rank to, to receive ATO tax debt defaults. So essentially any business with a tax debt of at least $100,000 and is overdue by 90 days. Uh, most importantly, they're not engaging with the ATO. So they're essentially turning a blind eye to any communication and they don't have any active complaint um, with the Inspector General of, of Tax uh, Ombudsman. So that data started to flow through we're in the double digits um, now with the amount of uh, businesses with um, a tax default, but uh, with discussions from the ATO, uh, we believe that this will ramp up to about five to 8,000 businesses with a tax debt uh, by the end of uh, this year and this financial year. Yeah, we're really proud to have that additional insight on the credit reports for you. Um, look, here's a, a copy of the um, where you can locate the survival guide on our website. So definitely jump on, have a look at that. If you have any issues locating this, this page, reach out, we, we can shoot you through a copy of that. But all you need to do is download the PF, PDF um, and you're good to go with that one. Wonderful, well, with five minutes to spare, we'll wrap it up there and get you on, on your lunch break. But uh, thank you again uh, for joining Lucy and myself. If you've got any questions that we can take offline, organise a call, show your demonstration, or just have a friendly chat, feel free to, to reach out to us. Our contact details are there below. Um, our support details there as well for any users that might need any technical support. But thank you again. Hope you got some interesting insights out of that call. Uh, it's available for replay as well for those that couldn't make it or you'd like to revisit it. Um, thank you again and have a great day. Thanks so much, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.